Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Pink Fresh Studio. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am absolutely giddy because I get to give you a sneak peek of the brand new inks that are coming on Friday, September 29th. You can see I've picked my palette here and I'm going to use an oldie but a goodie stamp set. It's not really that old. <laughs> But it's called Wonderful in Every Way, and it features this gorgeous floral. Now, I have built a color palette using all brand new shades of Pink Fresh inks that are going to be released this Friday. So you won't find them linked in the description quite yet because they're not available. But I'll make sure that I link the stamps and the sentiments that I'm using. And I'm starting with this large floral image, and I'm going to stamp it in Misty Coast ink. Now, Misty Coast is not one of the new inks, but it is a nice light gray ink that will give me some outlines that I can see because I'm not quite sure what color I want the outline of my florals yet. I'm stamping this on some smooth white cardstock, and then I am going to just trim that down so I can do my ink blending. Now I'm using a grip mat on my glass work surface to hold my paper and my stencils in place, but you can use tape or you can use magnets, whatever works for you. And I'm gonna start out with my new favorite pink from Pink Fresh Studio, and it is called Cherry Blossom. It is so beautiful. It's kind of between ballet slipper and coral reef. It's a little warmer and a little more saturated than ballet slipper. It is so good. You're going to love this pink and you're going to see how it fits in with the other new pinks that are part of the Rose Garden collection. Now I am moving on to the next stencil. I actually did these stencils a little out of order. So I started with stencil two and then I went back to stencil one. And for this, I'm using the new Peony. This is the second darkest color in the Rose Garden collection. I love this Rose Garden collection and it kind of took me by surprise because I was thinking I wouldn't love the kind of more earthy, darker shades in this collection, but I absolutely do. So that's stencil one. Now we're moving on to stencil three. And for this, I'm going to use a little bit of peony on these lighter flowers, kind of to the bottom and over to that left side. And then on the upper flower, it's kind of a smaller bud above this large flower, I'm gonna bring in the begonia, which is the third darkest color in this Rose Garden collection. And it almost gives me like, it has a little bit of earthiness to it that kind of gives some clay vibes. Now to blend this on, I'm gonna use my half inch brush from Pink Fresh Studio because that way I can control getting it only in this smaller flower at the top. And then I'm gonna blend a little bit of it in the center of this large floral, just kind of deepening up some of those areas there. So I didn't want these all to be dark, but I wanted to bring a little bit of depth into the center of that larger floral. So by using that half inch blending brush, I can really control where I'm placing that color. Now, once I get that blended in there, I am going to switch up my color palette and I am going to bring in Spanish Moss. And this is a part of the new Weeping Willow color collection. I'm gonna grab another half inch brush. This is kind of a yellow green color family. I absolutely love yellow greens. I think they bring in a beautiful pop of kind of brightness to a card. And so I'm just gonna blend a tiny bit of that into the center of my floral. And look at this coming together, I absolutely love it. Now, I did decide I wanted to kind of intensify the cherry blossom color in the open areas of these florals. So I went back to stencil number two, I placed that down again, and I'm bringing in a little bit of cherry blossom just on the right hand and the bottom of this larger floral, just giving it a little bit of variation in the depths in different areas. And I'm also going to hit the smaller flower over to the left hand side. But keep in mind, you can always build up the color to intensify it if you want to. So go light from the beginning. And then like I said, you can go back and add a little more color. So now that we have that floral kind of taken care of, we're gonna move on to the greenery. And for this greenery, I am going to use the new Green Gables color collection. I'm using the second color in the collection, so the second darkest, which is called Eucalyptus. 
and the darkest of this collection, which is called Lush Forest. Now, these are some beautiful kind of gray greens. They have a sage color that I think everybody is going to flip for. But I love these because they kind of bring in a very sophisticated vibe to your greens. And they also have just kind of like a little bit of a dusty boho feel to me, in my opinion. So I think you're going to love how all of these new shades of colors really breathe new life into your project. So you can see I'm moving on to this lush forest. This is a super dark and rich green. It is one of my favorites of all of the new collection of inks. I just think it is so beautiful. And I actually decided to use this color for my outline stamping. And I'm going to place this image back in my Misty when I'm done with all of my ink blending and add a really beautiful lush forest outline. Now, one of my favorite things about this color release is how it really does breathe new life into the products that you already have. Changing up color combinations can really just reignite creativity and I think it's so fun to play with color and kind of mix and match and you can see I've used quite a few of these new I've used three of the six new color collections that are coming from Pink Fresh Studio I'm going to place this image it looks gorgeous as it is without even an intense outline I could do it just like this but I'm going to place this back into my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to ink up that floral image with my Lush Forest ink and stamp that right on top of all of my ink blending. Now, I will say that I did leave my stamp in place on my Misty stamping tool so that I could place this back into that corner and make sure that all of my stamping lines up. So be sure that if you're going to do this technique where you stamp it in a lighter color and then go back with a darker color, that you leave your stamp exactly in place in your Misty so that you don't run into any blurred lines. Now I used the coordinating die to die cut this image and now I'm moving on to die cutting this braided tag from some ivory cardstock. So this tag is kind of cool because it's the shape of an arch, but you have little insets in the form of dies that you can kind of nestle into this outline and create some details on this tag. So I've used the braided version of that detail to kind of die cut into this tag. And now I am going to use that wonderful in every way large floral and I'm going to stamp this kind of as a background onto this tag shape. So I'm just placing my tag into the center of my Misty and then I'm placing my floral image and I am going to ink this up in bay leaf. Now this is also part of the Weeping Willow ink collection that's coming. It's those yellow greens. I used the Spanish moss in the center of my floral earlier. And this is one down from that Spanish moss. It's called bay leaf. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got kind of a golden yellow green shade to it. That's how I would describe it. <laughs> and I think it makes for a beautiful backdrop against this floral. Now I'm taking my die cut floral and I'm holding it in place with some temporary adhesive onto the edge of my tag and then I just trimmed off the excess of that floral using my scissors. Then I can go ahead and add a layer of foam adhesive behind this and mount it permanently onto my tag. And I skipped adding adhesive to the edges of these leaves and this bud above the floral so that I could kind of fold them up and add a little dimension. Now I had this sentiment in my stash already. This is from the wonderful sentiments hot foil set from Pink Fresh Studio. And I already had it foiled and die cut and I thought why not use it today? It says so grateful. I'm mounting it on a strip of cardstock that coordinates beautifully with that bay leaf ink and I'm allowing it to just kind of hang over the top. And then I'm going to mount it overlapping that floral image and just kind of bleeding off the edge of my tag. I will trim off some of that excess before I finish off the card. Now, because I am obsessed with that cherry blossom ink, I wanted to create a background for my card using this ink color. So I'm just smushing my pad onto the surface of my glass mat there. And then I'm going to press a piece of white cardstock over this kind of puddle of ink that I've created. I didn't add any water to it. This is just straight ink. And I get kind of like this 
rustic, kind of really free looking background. And I thought I would use the more solid portion of this, but I ended up loving this piece here that just has a little bit coming in from that edge. So I trimmed that panel down to about four by five and a quarter inches. I added my tag on using a layer of foam adhesive, and then I added a little more shine with some gold metallic pearls from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm using my dual tip embellishment wand to place those with a little bit of liquid glue. And I am going to use a little bit of that greenery that I trimmed off earlier from my image, and I'm just gonna tuck it in behind that sentiment. I added that entire thing to an A2 size card base and that finishes off my card today. Now here is a look at the palette that I used. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. All of these are brand new colors coming Friday, September 29th to the Pink Fresh Studio store. Set your alarms for 7 a.m. Central Time. You do not want to miss this release. I think you're going to absolutely love the breath of fresh air that these new color palettes are going to add to all of your Pink Fresh Studio products. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this video in the YouTube description below. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. I'm so glad you stopped by and hung out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the fabulous card making and paper crafting projects shared here. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.